if we leave diabetes unattended and unmanaged, diabetes does have an impact on our lifespan. A large global study suggested that it can reduce your lifespan by almost seven years. But it depends on how well it is managed. It depends on what age it started. It depends on your comorbidities. It depends whether you have hypertension, whether you have cholesterol, whether you have family history of heart disease. Are you a smoker? All those modify this. And if you follow the basic dictum of ABC, which is if you manage your A1C well, that is the blood sugar, three month average. If you manage your B, B is blood pressure, A is A1C, B is blood pressure, manage your blood pressure well, and C, C is cholesterol. If you manage these well, don't put on excess weight, then this risk of redu reduction in lifespan because of diabetes can probably be uh, circumnavigated. You can avoid it. So I think it's uh, important to understand that yes, I've been diagnosed with diabetes, and if I don't take care of myself, it can actually affect my longevity. I think the way diabetes is increasing in our country, uh, it is very, very important to prevent diabetes. Prevention is the key. We cannot handle all the complications of diabetes as they arise either as an individual or as a family or the nation can't handle the economic burden either. So prevention is the key and therefore testing is very important even if you have no symptoms, right? So people who have a strong family history of diabetes should start screening for diabetes very early. There is no exact cutoff, but definitely maybe at 20, you need to check every couple of years, maybe at 30, you need to check every year once your blood glucose and HbA1c. If you are overweight and have family history, so okay, I have got diabetes and my son who is 15 years old weighs 80 kilograms, then I need to check him then. If you are overweight, even children need to be tested now for diabetes. And the purpose of the test is A, of course, to pick up undiagnosed diabetics. As you know, that almost 50% of diabetes worldwide remains undiagnosed, right? And is picked up only when a complication happens. So it's not just that, it's also to pick up, pick up pre-diabetes in a stage where you actually haven't got diabetes yet, but you're on your way to becoming diabetic. And I see this zone of borderline blood glucose of pre-diabetes as a great window of opportunity. So if you test the young, youngsters for pre-diabetes, those who have a family history or those who are overweight, and especially those who have both family history and are overweight, you will pick up very borderline values. And that sort of rings a bell. If it's explained correctly, then such patients, such people, individuals, they're not patients, actually should intervene with lifestyle measures. And therefore, they can stop themselves from slipping down that path, slipping down that slope towards diabetes. And many times when you intervene at this stage, you may f avoid diabetes for decades together. Whereas you find out much later when complications have happened, you can't really reverse it so easily. Well, I think the majority of diabetics can have a great quality of life, as good as someone without diabetes. So what is it? Basically, if you follow a healthy lifestyle, which is the true for everybody with or without diabetes, which includes the right foods, the right kind of exercise, adequate sleep and mental relaxation, you'll be healthy. So in fact, in my experience, I have found many a time diabetics or people with diabetes actually have a healthier life than those without because they have that signal in their brain. My God, I've got blood glucose, I've got to look after this. And therefore, they, they're more compliant and their lifestyle can often be better than someone who doesn't have diabetes but his blood pressure is soaring, his cholesterol is soaring, his weight is increasing. So I don't think diabetes will compromise your quality of life if you take care of it from day one. 